Hi there, this is Sue Leone with the channel Cat Hair Don't Care for cat moms and dads like me who are just as eclectic as me. And you'll notice that the camera is swinging because I have rigged it up to the gooseneck lamp on my husband's leather workstation. Because I wanted to show you um, some embroidery that I've been doing. Now this is for the um, satin binding. This is big binding, um, oh, what do you call it, bias tape, the, the gigantic double thickness bias tape um, that is used as binders. Cat, get out of the way. I know, I know. Um, and this, you can see I've used some water-soluble um, pencil uh, I had blue and I tried to sharpen it and it turned to garbage and so I bought, oh please don't do that cat, apparently the being suspended is not really a good idea. I think I need to tape it, but I guess, see I do have cats. So I used blue and I um, ended up getting a two-pack at Joanne Fabric and Crafts that had yellow and uh, kind of a taupe gray color. Well, you know, one for the dark color on light fabrics and the yellow on dark fabrics. So, um, I wanted to show you this embroidery that I've been doing. This is uh, my 10th Puffy Star. Um, let me show you my inspiration for my Puffy Star. I uh, actually found this concho at, oh, you cute cat, you. Found this concho at uh, Tandy Leather. And it's just one of their common ones. It's called the Texas Star 3D Concho. It's like four bucks. And I thought, Oh, this would be great. Um, it's a star-themed baby blanket, and so I thought this would be a really cool uh, thing to embroider. And what I actually ended up doing, um, this is a scroll frame, by the way. It's an alternative to a hoop. It's really good for long projects um, because you can roll you can see you can roll it uh, on both scrolls and make it taut. Remember, when you're doing embroidery, it needs to be taut without being stretched. And so, um, actually, I probably should tighten this because my cat stepped directly on it, which obviously is not good. Um, I just got this at Amazon. I think the knobs I had to get extra and I think the frame and the knobs was something like $23 with tax. So you can see there's still a little bit of play in the fabric. I want it to make a little bit of a drum sound. I'm going to hold it in place. Oh, cat. And tighten. And it's pretty easy to work. Um, I don't know if you can see the slit. Uh, is you just slide the one end in the slit, and then you just like a piece of paper, and you do that. And you can see if I push up, you can can see that it sort of shows up a little bit. And then what I did was I just sort of started using the pencil. <clears throat> Thank you, Gus. Started using the pencil to mark it out, and you can see what I did. Um, here is that I, no, not, not you, baby. Oh, my goodness. Definitely swinging is not a good idea. Uh, you can see what I did is mark it out here in the pencil. Oh, child. And, um, and now I'm embroidering that. 
But since this is my last one, I wanted to show you how to do it because this is a really nice uh, thing to add to sashes. And in fact, because in AmpGuard, the class sashes need to be at least two inches wide, well, when you fold this back in half the way it's supposed to be, uh, it's two inches wide. So that's a very good thing. You could decorate your sash however you'd like. Cat, I love you, boy. You need to stay out of this. Now, the important thing to think, you can see there's a little bit of puckering going on, and that's because the scroll frame is great for holding it taut, but it only holds it taut in one direction. And you can see it does not hold it taut in two directions. And so that's where all the puckering is coming in. So when you are working on these two arms, which I always want to do first, there's no puckering at all. You just, you know, it's really pretty straightforward. Once you get here to anything that's going in this direction, though, because everything is carried on the back exactly the same as the front, it's tightening. Just like you, you know, those things when you add rubber bands to a gallon of milk and it eventually explodes, or you, you put rubber bands on a, a watermelon, it's eventually going to explode because each time you go around, it adds more force, it adds more pressure. And the same thing happens with the fabric. So I wanted to show you that I, I traced the middle of each arm of the star and I traced the part where it dips down in between the arms. And then I took that away and I just sort of sketched in where the point of the star really is. So I'm going to... I'm, I used to go around this line as well, and I realized you really don't need to. So you find, just look for the end of it. Where's the tip of your needle? And now I'm using metallic thread, and it just did exactly what I hoped it would do for, for this demonstration. This is really wire. Even though it is artificial metal, I don't know if you can see, it kinks. And so I'm constantly turning the work over and making sure that it comes out correctly. And now I'm going to use one hand and sort of pull this down so that there's a, an opposite force to me. I'm pulling in this direction. There we go. Because I don't want it to pucker. Puckering is inevitable in some cases, but you want to keep it nice and taut without being stretched. And quite honestly, if I start to see that it's puckering, I just sort of mush it around and relax all those, those fibers. Now, it, again, it's more difficult with the metallic thread than it would be with something smoother like cotton or polyester. But this is totally still doable. And guys... This is my 10th star ever, and this is like my second time embroidering something ever. And it turns out great. Now, is it perfect? Of course not. Every single one of these 10 stars is different. You can see I'm alternating back and forth. Make sure I'm still in frame. And I keep checking. Yep, nothing clumped up. And so one of the cool things that I learned on my own to do, 
It's like a fool. I didn't do what you're doing and look for a video. As I learned that if you tuck each successive one under, it gives this really nice appearance. I really like it. So that's what I've been doing for the last, I don't know, seven stars. Each one takes about an hour, and each star takes about seven yards of thread, because I'm doubling, just to make it go faster. And as I go back and forth, side to side, it builds up the arm of the star. And you can see I'm not going straight in. I'm going in at an angle to tuck it under. And I'm filling in along, it sort of looks like a, oh, got stuck. It sort of looks like a, a part in hair. Now another thing that it does is see what it's doing? It's twisting in on itself and that's what makes these little little like kinks in the, the metallic thread. And I'm gonna keep, oops, see how it's puckering? That means that I've pulled it too tight. So I want to kind of loosen it up and be really careful to not pull it tight. It will automatically be tight enough just by the repetition. Let it be nice and gentle. This is very therapeutic. I'm going to tuck in. I'm going to speed up a little bit so that I can not bore you to tears as I try and find. You're basically placing each thread, and remember I'm going under, each thread one needle width apart. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not counting. This, uh, you can see that I've done about the same number of stitches on each side, and yet they're not symmetrical because it's a work of art. It's not a work of math. Now, I'm starting to get kind of a divot here, and I want to fill that in. So I'm going to Instead of going under, I'm going to kind of go in the middle. I just stab myself. You can see it gets puffy on both sides. And I usually do an, you know, an overstitch in the middle. And then you'll see that I'll do an overstitch when I get right to the, the center of the star. It's I'm not going to finish the whole star here, guys. You won't be here for an hour. starting to get to the end of this thread, which is why I chose now to start this video, because I do want to show you how to end with metallic thread. And how to then get a new batch going. Oh, see, I'm getting pretty close to the end. I'm just going to do this last one and then show you what to do to tie off. 
All right, so you've got all of this. And this stuff is expensive, so I want to use as much of it as possible. Um, and so I don't have really enough here to do the typical, like, go in and then back through your own loop. So what I have been doing is sticking my embroidery shears through there, or scissors, or whatever you want to call them. And... Then I take the two halves, and then I do a regular square knot. A square knot is, is the knot that everybody knows. It actually has a name. It's called a square knot. There's the first half. And... Eh. It's not cooperating. And there's the second half. I mean, this stuff is tricky to thread because you can see what it's doing. See how it's already splitting apart the three strands of the cord that makes up the thread. And I'm going to just trim it nice and close and then get rid of the fruit fras because cats like to eat things like that. And I'm going to do one arm. Two arms. Oh, you can see I'm coming to the end of my spool of thread, and I'm gonna go at a slight angle. And you gotta get it the first time, or you gotta cut it shorter. Let's see if I can do this. Lucky. Right now, one of the tricks that I learned is you can't just tie it because it's metal. Look at all these coils. You really, <laughs> in order to prevent as many of those snags and kinks as possible, because it wants to coil, it's been on that spool forever. You, oh dang it, there's none already. You get it so that you're holding both ends and it's taut and you grab that. And then you may do this with polyester or cotton thread, but it's so important with metallic thread. Then you make it, you just let it flatten out as you go down. Then you can tie. Again, expensive stuff, so you want to use as much as you can. And then notice there's there was a kink. All right. So now I'm just going to pick up where I started. Or where I left off, rather. I'm going to go ahead while I'm thinking about it and fill in this little hole right there. I missed a little bit. Now, it's lots of frou-fra there. Can I cut it? Sure. Am I gonna? No, because this will be... I'm basically using it to bind my crocheted uh, baby blanket that I'm making. So then I'm going to just go in here. No idea how long this video is so far. Oh, 20 minutes. Wow. That's way longer than I thought. I hope you've been having a good time. My cat got bored and walked away. It's always good for crafting.
Now usually I will crochet while I'm walking laps at work on lunch. Can't embroider. I'm not that good. I encourage you, as always, take your craft materials with you. Make a little go bag. That's right, Velvet. You tell them. Because, you know, a busy crafter is a happy crafter. This is, um, by the way, DMC Diamante. Or, sorry, Diamant. 35 meters. Uh... I don't know what else it says. It's it's actually 29% polyester and the rest I've yeah, I think it's some sort of viscose, which is viscose is, is um it's a, a wow I really should have looked at that. Hmm. Viscose is a thermoplastic kind of fabric, I guess, that uh, thermoplastic means you can't use it in hot water or hot dryers because it will shrink like crazy, like rayon does. We all know that awesome rayon outfit that we had, and we wore it once, and then we washed it, and then we threw it away because it shrank. It's getting all puckery again. Well, viscose is another kind of thermoplastic fabric, and I learned this because I was substitute teaching in a home ec sort of textiles class at a high school. So don't think that I'm some genius. Cat's fighting over a box. That's okay. Did you just seriously snot on my oh, cat? Anyway, so. Uh, this is, oh, that's not good. So viscose, as I was saying, is thermoplastic, and um, it is made from, basically they take a plant fiber, usually bamboo or something like that, you know, I mean, we're used to linen coming from flax. Well, viscose, they take all this cellulose from the plant fiber and they just turn it in, they, they basically make it into a plastic. So it's really expensive because it's really processed and la-di-da, and it's a beautiful thing, but you know what? So is polyester. So don't think that it's anything special. If anything, to me, it's more annoying because it's hard to take care of because it's just like rayon, nylon. You wash it in cold water, that's great. You accidentally stick it in the dryer and you no longer have your fabric. This is ticking me off. Look at this. It like half hitches itself. I don't know how it does this. And you just have to work it out. I was kind of hoping it would do this on me as well, so you could see that. Oh, this is an ungodly long video. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So, boy, this is really not cooperating. <laughs> ah, there it is. Okay. And there's the kink. So, the moral of this video is you can do more than you think you can. And uh, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed watching. And uh, try new things. Never stop learning. Never stop attempting things. Because you might be surprised. That's it for me. Bye.